you were uh, you've been a bit well, critical no of the general nepotism <laughs> involved with LeBron and Bronny. And last night they get their moment, and LeBron spent the whole time afterward being emotional publicly and he gets the Hollywood ending even if they don't win a championship he gets the Hollywood ending I can't believe he's still playing like that at that age Crazy. and, that, and yeah. that they're beating Minnesota which was a good deal better than them last year but they got their moment so let's play this moment and see if uh, dad weekend Billy gets moved by the syrup of any of this all ready all right you see the intensity right just play carefree, though. Don't worry about mistakes. Just go out and play hard. Wow, that's cute. It is. Yep. Bronny works hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice. I've, I, I have my regrets over how we discussed it headed into the draft, if I'm mm. going to be honest with you. Why? I, I don't know. I, I just I don't, I don't like how it came off. I don't like how it came out. I just – I don't know. I, I don't I, – I like to feel – I like having warm, fuzzy moments, but like I like them to be natural and not feel like they're kind of like fabricated on them, yeah. being controlled by you know corporations essentially. Nike, really, if we're gonna name names, <laughs> like, I don't want to feel like you know every every feel good is just like a big PR move by Nike to sell more Nike, and that's kind of how a lot of this has has felt so far. It's what LeBron in Hollywood is meant to, to birth as he transitions while still playing into father and uh, whenever it's grandfather and starts making more and more content because he's doing what Peyton Manning is doing while he's still playing. It's almost the whole reason he went to Hollywood is to get the Hollywood ending. And he's gotten it by still – man, I'm going to remind you guys again that uh, Dwayne Wade and Carmelo Anthony are doing podcasts as his peers reminding you how good they were. And uh, that was a long time ago. Their colleague is still out here ushering in control of Hollywood by putting his son on the roster and getting people to argue about it. He's been a content machine for 20 years. I thought Kenny Smith in the pregame did a very good job of talking about Bronny and the fact that had he not sustained that terrible injury, well, he had a heart injury, um, went to the hospital, and had he, he not he sustained had, that. He had cardiac arrest. Yes, he was a top five recruit, maybe the best player in his class. That's what Kenny Smith well, was saying. A lot he would have made it to the NBA but eventually. Not, uh, there, okay. But they, LeBron they, provided his kid and himself and his family with a special moment because he has the leverage to do so. And maybe it was manufactured. You want these things to happen naturally. I actually understand what Billy is saying, but it still was a special, but nice it, it's, moment. It's literally manufactured from the people who bring you. LeBron runs the entire NBA and Hollywood for 20 years, is the biggest athlete in America. And at the end, gets so many perks that he chooses the coach and his kid is on the bench because he's going to get the ending that he wants. But so. if you could choose that perk, why would you not choose that perk? Getting your son to the NBA, playing with your son, going into a game with your son, those are cool moments, man. J.J. Redick was very clear on the front end that LeBron had nothing to do with his hiring. And I'm sure, Bronny, uh, there's nothing to do with him being on the Lakers. Well, no, either. he threatened to go play in Australia if he didn't pay on Daddy's team. But other than that. Well, you can complain. I just, here's the thing that feels manufactured about it, right? Like, I, I like. It is manufactured. No, I know. All I, of the, it. the reason that we know, and it's not even being hidden, is because, like, as soon as he gets drafted, there's commercial campaigns that come out. And, like, even the rookie hazing thing of, like, LeBron and Bronny, like, there's a Nike commercial about it. Like, it just. It doesn't feel real, like none of it. Like that's why it's hard, I think, to enjoy the moment and be like, this is so special because it just feels so like over the top manufactured by Nike and by the NBA to like, you need to feel this way. This is so special. Feel this way. And it's like, I could just naturally feel this way by having actual, genuine, real moments and you guys not trying to force feed these natural, genuine moments. Why can't both of these things, though, exist in your head at the same time? Uh, the relationship with his son is clearly and obviously real for all to see. Anyone living vicariously parenthood through, wow, that'd be cool to think about, or not, 
working or being able to work with my son or daughter. Why or, wouldn't you manufacture that moment if you could manufacture but, but, that moment? But, but you can, it can be manufactured and still cool. It does. You don't have. I to, agree. You don't have to choose between those two things. I you, think it being manufactured makes it less cool. Like you don't. It's like what's real, what's not real. I don't know. Okay, but uh, we are not uh, the greatest people to measure cool by degrees. But okay, if I, mean, we, I can tell you how I feel, that's how I feel. Of course, and I would say many people object to this for many different reasons but if they did less it would feel cooler i feel like it would feel more genuine if there was actually like a moment where they checked in not like a you know pre-planned this is when we're gonna do it watch the beginning of the second quarter let's check this let's check that like i think honestly if if you want to have a deep conversation it's just like a human condition thing right like it's just everybody wants to live in the time when the most important thing happened and this is the greatest player i've ever seen do xyz thing and like every generation just wants to give their life meaning by saying they were alive when the greatest thing ever happened so we just continue to manufacture these moments to make ourselves feel better you're saying manufactured but you would not dispute that the relationship between them is genuine and authentic i don't know the relationship if i'm gonna be perfectly honest all right but what do you think i only see what Nike puts out. Okay, so, so I don't know. So you don't. You, I'm not. I'm not questioning their relationship. That's I'm just fair. saying, like, yeah. everything doesn't have to be a commercial. Uh, I guess I'm asking you: uh, Do you believe? And maybe I'm the sucker here. What's been presented to me about LeBron James as the most connected athlete to access in the social media age gives me the impression that he is a caring father. I'm not saying he's not. Okay, I, and you, you Billy's saying we don't know. We we don't know. This right. is this is correct. We don't know. But if you're applying the cynicism of because Nike manufactures commercials when they've been in the mythology business since long before Jordan, this is what they do. It's who they are. They're the best marketing people in the history of industry in creating what the mythologies are around these people. And they've got a giant economy who is their chief sneaker salesman at the moment who has an amazing storyline to give the storybook writers. And he lives in Hollywood and he's trying to figure out how to end the story on I owned 20 years of sports in America. I get it. Wait, so Bronny knew the cereal was in the car? That's ridiculous. Mm. A lot of cameras there for that. But you want that to happen naturally. LeBron had to play until he's 40. Like, the chances of that happening naturally are zero. I heard Nick Wright (laughs) saying this. Like, we might not have LeBron right now. Correct. If not for Bronny being in the league. He probably would have retired by now. So, if you appreciate uh, LeBron and are happy he's still in the league, you kind of just got to eat this. I'm happy for him. I'm happy he's getting to experience and do all of this. But I'm being honest and telling you, it feels less genuine as a consumer than it could. I understand. Windhorse is saying that the Lakers plan on keeping Bronny on the roster because a lot of people feel like he should go to the G League and go through what other players have had to go through to get to the NBA. But This is keeping LeBron motivated and activated, and he's into it, and he loves it, and he's showing his son the ropes. And therefore, Windhorse is saying that he thinks Bronny will stay on that roster for the season. So, Gats, one of the things that I always have found interesting about how we cover sports, all of it's sales, man. And we're the world's greatest customers because how we care about all of this nonsense in a way that's totally unreasonable. And guess who's as good at sales as Michael Jordan was? The guy who's getting to play later with his kid because he's figuring out a different ending past the time that he can actually win championships while still making the Lakers matter. And on opening night, they give you Celtics and Lakers. And right up on the screen is titles Celtics 18, Lakers 17. Our late game is LeBron James with Bronny, one of only two for the night as we kick off the season because he still matters like that. At the end when he's the oldest player in the league because he's going to give up this league reluctantly even though they took it from him last year and all he's going to get at the end is the Hollywood, which is all he wants at the end. I understand, but like also as someone with two children, I do like – I don't know. I I sometimes think maybe I shouldn't include my children in XYZ thing. And obviously what he's doing for his son is great. Like his son is in in the NBA, right? You can debate whether he got in based on his own merit, whether he got in with the help of his dad, whatever. He's done a great job 
of raising his son, getting him to the NBA, getting him the right coaches, doing the right thing to get him prepared and get him into this point. Now, he's going to have to prove himself, obviously, because he's not just going to stay in the league forever, even after LeBron is gone, if he doesn't deserve to be in the league. And you know what? Maybe he's equipped to do that. Maybe he's not. He's going to have to prove it himself, which is fine. It's just like the whole marketing, the whole commercialization of your family. Just I agree. It's been heavy a little much sometimes. And all of you are in agreement on that one. It's how uh, Nike selling you family is going to feel. Yeah, when but, you have but as this the most powerful person, you can in. control Nike and tell them, like, I let let's me wait a week on that commercial. Yeah, let's let Bronny come on, come in and kind of find his own. Like, we don't need to because this puts added pressure on him. Would you agree or disagree with that? Oh, what? LeBron, a narcissist who would think of himself very often because of what his life has been <laughs> in the last 20 years, that he's the most. Man, well, I, that's I, why I'm saying be a father here. I. I